Hi guys, it's Tracy here from the Academy and welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. So today what we're going to be looking at is Leap Insert Higher Level Geography, the exam structure. So let's get started. So guys, to start off, as you can see on the board here, date for the 2022 exam is, it's always the same day. It's always the Friday after the June bank holiday weekend. So that will be the 10th of June, 2022. And typically speaking, it is your morning exam, the 9.30 to 12.20 exam. Now, what that means to you is your exam is two hours and 50 minutes long. So it's a two hour and 50 minutes minute exam long. So just under that three hour marker. Now that might seem like a huge amount of time to some of you, but actually that's quite tight. And you're going to see why now in a moment. So marks wise, your exam paper is worth 400 marks. That's 400 out of a 500 marks in total that go towards your final grade. That means that this is 80% of your final grade. Now, where does the other 20% go? The other 20% goes towards your field study. So that booklet you're gonna hand in, typically speaking around the Easter time, either just before or just after, depending on arrangements this year, but it's going to be 20%. So the exam paper is worth 80% of your final grade. Now, the Leave and Search Geography exam is split up into two parts or two sections, whichever you want to refer to it as. It's split up into part A or part one, your short question section, and also part number two, your structured and essay style question. So we're gonna get started here with your short question section. The very, very first thing you're going to meet when you walk into that exam. Now, what you're gonna see here is first things first, there is going to be 12 questions in the short question section. So what you're required to do is answer 10 out of those 12 questions. Now, what I'd be advising most people to do is actually to answer all 12 and all your examiner is going to do is take the best 10 and award you your marks for those. Now, each of these questions are worth eight marks. So they're all worth the exact same marks, eight marks each. Now, though, what that means is that is worth 80 marks in total, which means your short questions are actually worth 20% of your written paper. So they're a huge proportion of that written paper. Now, timing wise, the timing here can vary depending on the result that you want to achieve. Now, what I would always tell students is a maximum of 25 minutes. However, if you're someone that's looking for that H1 or H2 mark, what you should be aiming for is under 20 minutes. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for a H1 or H2 or even a H3. And how do you get that? You're gonna to have to train yourself to answer those questions in under 20 minutes. And that doesn't mean practicing just physical questions, but all types of short questions that can appear. Now, the final thing here I want to speak to you about is short questions, the topics that can be actually examined. Now, a lot of people think, you know, every element of the course can be examined here, but it actually can't. There's only three things that can be examined in the short question section. Now, what are those three things? That is your physical geography, your regional, and also finally the skills section. Now, physical and regional, generally speaking, are very, very well answered. Usually there's about six to seven physical geography questions and students are usually very good at those. Typically speaking, one with usually a maximum of two regional and the rest being the skills section. Now, my advice to students would be, students typically would revise physical and regional, or I should say practice physical and regional questions. The skills questions are always the ones that seem to be left out. They are the ones that are answered poorly in the exam. And also because students haven't practiced them, they typically take up a lot more time than any other type of question. Now it's really, really important to practice those skills questions before you go in. Maybe on your ordnance survey map, your aerial photograph, or your weather maps. They're the ones that students are being knocked down on each time in the exam. Now that's the short question section, as I said, answering 10 out of 12 questions at eight marks each, 80 marks in total. And if you're looking for that higher grade, answering them in under 20 minutes. Guys, practice makes perfect on this section. So getting your exam papers out and practice, practice, practice. You're gonna see that these questions are repeated year after year. 
Now, the second part of the paper is our structured and our essay style questions. This is the kind of bigger chunk of the paper. It's 80% of your paper. Now, it's split up, as you'll see on the board, into four parts. Physical geography, regional geography, your elective, which includes your economic and your environmental, and also your options, of which I wrote down one, your geoecology. Now, the 2022 exam is a little bit different than our traditional exam. For example, looking back at 2018 or 2019. This year, what you have to do, unlike others, is you have to answer one question from three sections and a third, apologies, a fourth from any section. So one question, as I said, from three sections and a fourth from any section. Now, what that means is you could answer one physical, one regional and let's say one economic. And what you could do is go back and answer a second physical geography question. So what this means for a lot of you guys going into that 2022 exam is you actually don't need to do four sections of the course. You can study three and study them three really, really well. Now let's take a look at this part of the paper. So starting off with physical geography, physical geography, remembering this is examined in short questions, so don't leave this one out. Physical geography is always questions number one, two, and three. That does not change, okay? Contrary to some students' beliefs. So questions one, two, and three. Now, the structure here of these questions is the same structure that applies to your regional and also your elective. So let's take a little look. Say, for example, I go into my exam and I choose to do question number one. So let's say question number one, it's an aerial photograph, a sketch of an aerial photograph. I get a feature of deposition, so maybe my delta, and also I get maybe the formation of two igneous rocks. That actually came up on last year's paper, so we're not probably going to see that this year. But I choose question number one. I like it. It suits me. Well, the structure that applies here, question number one will have a part A, a part B, and a part C. And what I have to do is I have to answer each part of this question. I can't pick and choose with other questions. So I need to answer the part A, part B and part C. The part A here, typically speaking, is very similar to a junior cert long question. They usually have a diagram and they ask me a couple of questions on it to name a few little things or maybe things associated with it and then maybe to briefly explain a process. Or it could be a sketch of an ordnance survey map, usually, or it could be an aerial photograph. Now, the part B and part C are the essay style questions. So these are 30 mark questions which require 15 significant relevant points. So my part A is worth 20 marks. My part B is worth 30 marks. And my part C is also worth 30 marks. Now that, as you can see here, when we do our calculations, is 80 marks in total okay so 80 marks in total so again another 20 percent of my paper now what's really important for students here going into sixth year is their timing with this the part a should take you approximately five minutes my part b and my part c my two essay style questions are allocated 15 minutes and 15 minutes so 5 15 15 so keep saying that to yourself until it's drilled in that is 35 minutes of my time in total. So 80 marks and 35 minutes of my time in total. Now, that is my physical geography question. Let's say I come down to my regional geography. Regional geography, again, something that's examined over here on my short questions is question number four, five, and six. Let's say I like number five, so I'm going to answer number five. That's my second question. Well, the exact same structure applies for this question as up here. In question number five, I have to answer the entirety of that question. There's a part A worth 20 marks, allocated five minutes, a part B and a part C, both 30 marks and both allocated 15 minutes. So 80 marks in total, 35 minutes of my time. I come down to here and we're taking, remember, the 2022 exam, took me a minute there, 2022 exam. I'm looking at my elective. Now, I want to point out straight away, you do not have to do both electives, both the economic and environmental. You do one or the other. Here at the academy, we typically go with the environmental elective. So we actually never have to look at this section at all. So keep that in mind. I have seen students in the past that have tried to study both. There is no need to study both, one or the other. 
However, in this 2022 exam, I don't have to do four sections. So if I don't want to, I don't have to do the environmental section this year. I could if I wanted to. I could pick question number 10 or question 11, but I don't have to. So keep that in mind, guys. So let's say I decide I'm going to narrow down my study now and I'm not going to do this. You can, but I'm not. Okay, let's say I decide to look at my option. Now, before we look at our option, remembering questions number one to 12, the same structure applies from each, this structure I've explained here. Now, when I go down to my option, let's say I pick question number 16. That's my question. Let's say I'm looking at GU Ecology, by the way, you might be looking at a different option like culture and identity, but the same structure will apply. Geoecology, I pick question number 16. It's a nice characteristics of a bio question. Lovely, very, very predictable questions. Thankfully that they are. Now, all of the options are higher level topics only, which tells me that a different structure applies. Here, when I pick question number 16 or any question in the option section, what I know is these are one essay style questions. So unlike above, that structure doesn't apply. It's one essay. So question number 16 is one essay that I have to write about. Now, what is this essay actually worth? Well, mark-wise, this essay is worth 80 marks. Now that's 80 marks for one essay. Okay, and I know I keep saying that, but I want to drill that into your head. Now, how long do I have with this essay? I have 35 minutes of my time. It's going to take up 35 minutes, 80 marks, one essay. Now, one little tip here, no matter what option you are doing, whether it's geoecology or culture and identity, you have to remember that that 80 marks is split up into two. It's split up into 20. 20 marks for what many of us refer to as overall coherence. Now, that, that the words can change, but generally speaking, overall coherence. So how well you answer that question asked really as such in a short, simple manner. The other 60 marks go for your significant relevant points. Each SRP is worth two marks as per usual. That 60 marks is typically split up into 20, 20, 20, or rarely you can have four sections. So when it's split up into four, we're going 15, 15, 15, 15, which is a little bit of a weird kind of allocation here just as such because obviously SRP is two marks. We won't go into that today. Now, that's my third question. Remembering I need to answer for the exam, but it's not the traditional exam, it is the 2022 exam. So I have the choice, I could go in and answer an environmental question if I wanted. However, I could go back up to my physical, regional, or back down to my geoecology and answer my fourth question. So let's pretend I see question number three Perfect question, I like that. That will be my fourth question. And that's what you have to do on this 2022 exam. So guys here, just a tip for the 2022 students, decide on your sections. I personally wouldn't leave out physical or regional because they are, answer, are examined in your short questions and then decide on your third. Focus your studying on them, okay? So study smarter rather than harder, okay? Now, when you're looking at that part two of the paper, how are you going to plan for that? Well, when you're writing your essays and you're learning your essays, ensure that you're not repeating yourself. You can only get marks once for saying a particular thing in an essay. So you can't tell your examiner 25 times that limestone is a permeable rock, okay? As much as you want to tell them that, tell them once, okay? And have that be that. Also, don't waffle okay you might be looking at me saying she's waffling on the whole time here but do not waffle don't waffle because if you keep drawing drawing out points like trying to put in like fancy sentences and things like that that's not really going to get your mar marks your examiner wants to see keywords definitions examples figures they're the important things okay that's what your examiner wants to see in these essay questions okay and that's the important part and that's what makes geography different than other subjects like english where they want a nice flamboyant essay here we want facts we want boring okay i shouldn't say that okay but we want straight to the point tell us the fact tell us the figure tell us the definition just that's all you need to do here with this section practice 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 
So guys, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully this helped. Maybe take a screenshot if you don't know this already or have a little listen back. Thank you so much for listening to me on our whiteboard Wednesdays, guys.